I'd like to start out with something that maybe is encouraging, and so I'm taking this from, uh, well, it's the Lord of the Rings series, but this is from The Hobbit. And Tolkien said, So comes snow after fire, and even dragons have their endings. So, for us, one day, these days, the area of COVID-19 will be a memory for us. We can make this a legacy of accomplishment. Our shared opportunity is to strive, to teach and learn, to earn our grades and continue our educational pursuits unabated in spite of the challenges. Finish strong. That is what champions do. That is what I hope all of you are able to do. Hi, this is Math 14, 28, Remote Delivery for May 1st, 2020, and the content lecture involves Section 7.4 in your textbook, and the topic is Solving Nonlinear Systems of Equations and Inequalities. I encourage you to use these kind of controls to throttle the delivery and increase your understanding. As you know, my wife is with God now, and I miss her, but I like to talk about her because that is one way I keep her alive with me. Uh, I'm remembering this morning date night with my wife during the mid-70s. I was teaching math at Purdue at the time. Dates usually involve dinner, subs and salads at a local institution called Arnie's, and a movie. And the movie I'm thinking about right now was called The Poseidon Adventure. It was a disaster film, and I probably have less a taste for disaster films going forward than I uh, did then because we're living through quite an adventure right now. Uh, but that's what's uh, top of mind. I am going to recite the theme song from this movie, uh, the first and last stanza. And if you want to hear it performed, uh, here's a uh, hot link that goes to that. It was performed at the Academy Awards that year. It goes, there's got to be a morning after, if we can hold on through the night. We have a chance to find the sunshine. Let's keep on looking for the light. The last verse is, there's got to be a morning after. We're moving closer to the shore. I know we'll be there by tomorrow, and we'll escape the darkness. We won't be searching anymore. Um, I miss my wife. Uh, section 7.4, here are the learning objectives. Please make note of them, and uh, later I may ask you if uh, you, in fact, achieved these objectives. So to solve a nonlinear system of equations, uh, it's important to realize that they could have no point of intersection, one or more points of intersection. So there's a whole bunch of different possibilities. Uh, the coordinates of each point of intersection represent a solution, and it has to work in all the equations and we're searching for real number solutions. We will look at an example where there's complex solutions, but we cannot graph those, and so we will just say they are non-real solutions. We can find these solutions using a substitution method like we've talked about earlier, or elimination me method. We will do examples of both. So here's the first example. You'll remember that this graph is a circle, and this graph is a line. We'll use a substitution method on this. So what we'll do is we will uh, solve equation 2, this one, for x in terms of y. Then we'll substitute that into equation 1, the first one, and do the algebra. And we'll find that y squared is equal to 9. So that means y is plus or minus 3. Now we will take those values for y and substitute into the equation that we had up here to figure out what values we get for x. So when we substitute 3 in, we will get 4 for x, and when we substitute minus 3, we'll get minus 4. So you see we get uh, some candidate things for uh, solutions, and what happens if we check both of those solutions, uh, we will find that they're all true, so there are two solutions that are uh, true. Uh, this one and this one are the ones that are true. We can graph the same equation using the same viewing window in our calculator, and we can again find that those are the solutions. Here's a problem that you may want to try to test your understanding. 
Here's another example. You want to solve this system. The first equation is a line. The second one is what we know to be a parabola. Again, we're going to use the substitution method. So we substitute this, which is the second equation, into the first equation. So when we do that, we will get this as an expression, and we will multiply both sides by minus 1 to make it easier to solve. We do have to use the quadratic formula to solve this, and we'll find that the solutions are complex numbers. That means that they don't exist as a real number. And so these are the solutions, but we note that there are no real solutions. So we will not find an intersection when we graph these. This is a set of real numbers, the x-axis. This is a set of real numbers, that's the y-axis. They don't intersect. You may want to try this example to perfect your understanding. Here's another example. Uh, we want to solve this system of equations. We now know this first equation is to be an ellipse, and the second equation we now know to be a hyperbola. Now here we're going to use the elimination method. Here's the original system that we're solving. And so first we're going to multiply equation 2, this one, by 5 to get this, and then we're going to add, and we see that we fixed it so the y squareds will drop out, so then I solve the resulting equation for x squared. x squared is equal to 2, x is plus or minus 2. And so that is x is plus or minus 2, and we substitute both of those values into the y. We find out that y is plus or minus 7. So we have to check to see are these solutions. So we substitute back into the original equation to see if they work. It turns out that all four check and all four are solutions. If we graph them then, we'll see that the ellipse and the hyperbolas does intersect in four places. Here's a problem for you to test your understanding of this problem. Here is an example four. We're to solve the following systems of equations. Now, this we recognize to be a hyperbola. This we don't. Both are actually hyperbolas, but the second one has a transverse axis along the line y equal x. It is rotated 45 degrees counterclockwise from the x-axis. That's beyond the scope of what we've studied in this class, but we do study it in other math classes at the College of DuPage. Substitution works best here. What we do is we look into the equation 2, and we solve that for y. So y is equal to 3 over x. Then we take the 3 over x and substitute it into the first equation, everywhere where I have y. I square this, and I multiply all the way through both sides by x squared, getting this. And then we're going to solve this. Now this is quadratic in form, and so I'll let u equal x squared, getting this quadratic, which factors. So I find that u is equal to 9, or u is equal to minus 3. So here I get x is equal to plus or minus 3, reversing the substitution, or x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3 times i. Now this is a complex solution. It can be a solution, but it's not going to show up in a graph, and we will just declare that to be not a real solution. So since x is equal to um, uh, 3, we can find using just the substitution that we used that y is 1 or y is minus 1. We can also find the solutions here. So all of these check, so they're all solutions. But when we graph, we are only going to find two solutions because we only get real solutions here. Here's a problem you can use to check your understanding. Life is a word problem, and so we do study word problems. Here is a problem where you got a architect laying out a rectangular piece of land with a perimeter of 204 meters and an area of this many meters. You want to find the dimensions of the land. So you can draw a picture, and we'll let L be the piece of land, uh, the length of the piece of land, and we'll let W be the width. Now, if you talk about the perimeter and the area, these are the equations that you end up with. So now we have a system of equations to solve. This is a line, and this is a hyperbola. So we have to solve this. The easiest way to solve this system of equations is by substitution. So if we solve the second one for L, we get L is equal to this number divided by 
w. We substitute that into the first equation, and we get this. We rearrange it, and we have a quadratic equation to solve, which it factors. Not easily, but it does factor. And so we find solutions to this are uh, that the uh, length is uh, 47 and the width is 45, or it could have been the other way about. Uh, if we graph those, we find out that the line intersects with the hyperbola uh, in two places, and those are 45, 57, or 57, 45. So you see there are, um, in a sense, two solutions, but the length and the width, the dimensions are 57 and 45. Here's a problem if you want to test your understanding. Now we're moving to inequality, so we're going to graph the solution set. So here we have less than or equal to, that means the boundary is included. Here we have strictly greater than n. But it's important for students to note that the boundaries were the same as an earlier example that we did. Uh, so this is a circle and this is a line. And we will reference our work there as this problem unfolds. So here's the solution. This was the circle that we graphed. Since we could be equal to and less than or equal to 25, it's the inside of that circle. Uh, this is the line. We're going to use a test point. Unfortunately, uh, the, dotted, the line is dotted because the boundary is not included. And we can't use 0, 0 as a test point for either one of these uh, because uh, it turns out that the line goes through uh, 0, 0. And so uh, what happens is we're going to use a different test point, and the test point that we're going to use is uh, 0, 2. So we use a test point of 0, 2. And you can see 0, 2 is inside the circle, but it is not. Um, if I put 0, 2, I don't have greater than or equal to 0. For, so it's not the half plane containing 0, 2. It's the other half plane. So I shade this. So the answer to this problem is that solid this dotted, and the area that's colored right there that's in both of those. Uh, in earlier examples, we found these points of intersection to be these. Here's a problem you can try if you want to test your understanding. Uh, here they say use a graphing calculator to graph the solution set. I'm going to su suggest that directions to this example notwithstanding, recommend you do this problem by hand as well as using a graphing calculator. So if we graph both of them and use the test point 0, 0, since neither one goes through 0, 0, we can find out that uh, 0, 0 uh, satisfies the um, uh, parabola equation, but it does not satisfy the other one, and so it's going to be this area that is shaded right there. Uh, and these were the points of intersection that you could find either by hand or using your calculator. Uh, if you wish to check your understanding, here is a problem that is recommended. So now, more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now, more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other.